I've come to Caltech because there is a brand new gravitational wave discovery. Let's go find out what it is. Uh, can we talk about the, <laughs> the discovery, Rana? Yeah. Can I, I want to sit on one of my black holes. All right. If you notice, uh, this one's a big one. <laughs> and that one's a little one. This one is a little one. Yeah. I, I always feel like I'm, I'm the most excited out of everybody. Really? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm excited when nothing's happening, cleaning some dust off a piece of glass. And it still seems exciting. Because I think this is the key piece of glass in our system. And I've just cleaned dust off of it. How cool is that? On January 4th, just like a few hours after midnight, boom, we got another signal, much like the first signal we found in September of 2015. And uh, it's also well represented by these black holes that we're sitting on. One of the black holes had a mass of about 30 solar masses, and the other one was about uh, 20. <laughs> and this one lasted longer than the first one, uh, both because our detectors are better at the lowest frequencies and uh, because the signal is uh, from black holes which are smaller, so they last longer. And it's really dramatic if you listen to the audio. The first signal that we got, it's only audible for about a tenth of a second. It's just boom, like this. But this new one sounds like boom, but it's a little bit more drawn out. And it comes from farther away. It's the furthest black hole merger that we've been able to detect. So it's at about three billion light years away, which means that signal, the merger actually happened three billion years ago, and the signal's been propagating to us for three billion years. What's particularly interesting in this merger are hints that the two black holes weren't spinning with the same orientation as each other, or as their orbit. This suggests that rather than forming out of binary stars, they formed separately and later became entwined through orbital dynamics. This one really says, okay, we now know that we're going to be seeing a lot of these things. It's a, it's a relief to have another signal to know that um, the universe is not just populated by all tiny, tiny black holes or by no black holes. If we improve our detector sensitivity by, say, a factor of two or three, the rates will go up from you know, seeing one every month or every two months to seeing one every day or every week. I would say it's very surprising now that uh, our first three signals came from binary black hole mergers which were pretty much an unexpected source as of mid-2015. Uh, there's a working theory, it's kind of exotic, that says that some of the black holes we're seeing are primordial. All right? They weren't formed through you know, conventional supernova explosions. They were formed during the Big Bang themselves. And they could be a, a part of dark matter, a component of dark matter. All right? So we may actually determine, after we get statistics on lots and lots and lots of these you know, black hole mergers that we're actually seeing maybe a hint of dark matter. It's sort of scratching at the door of the biggest mysteries that we have today in cosmology. In the past, before there were any signals, people used to use this phrase, which I completely disagree with, and they would say, uh, you know, if we don't find any signals, it will be even more interesting than if we do. And I said, no, 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 lots of signals, that's what we want. But now that we have a few, I'm feeling a little bit more complacent. And so I'd say uh, we really expected to see a lot of binary neutron stars. And if we don't, well, isn't that interesting? It means there's something going on. You know, you have all the pieces. We sort of know how neutron stars work. We've seen neutron stars uh, using radio astronomy. We know they're out there. We know that they come together in binaries. But why don't we see their gravitational waves? So it could be something else happens to them. Uh, just before the final merger. And there's something in their evolutionary track which goes off in a different direction than what we expect. And I think that would actually be interesting. I guess I've become one of those people that said, uh, if you don't see it, then maybe it's interesting. Because we'll learn something. You never know how many more signals we have sitting in the can that we're not telling you about. Can you say that again? <laughs> I don't think so. Would you, would you give me the exclusive, Rana? I would. You know, Derek, come on. <laughs> if Do I had secret signals, you'd be the first to know. These lights are the first two tentacles of a jellyfish I'm building. And there's a neural network which then drives this little chip which modulates these lights. And it's going to use these sensors, like the proximity and the sound, to figure out if people are close to it. And the neural network is going to train itself to flash the tentacle lights to make people come closer to it.